the reason this seminar exists is because, as Kehan said, the problem with ethics consultation around the country is there isn't, aren't enough of them typically at most institutions for you to learn by shadowing. Uh, when it, we, you know, as Cameron was saying, it's a phenomenon at many hospitals. Most big hospitals have them. Virtually all big hospitals have ethics consult services. But one of the startling numbers in that study was the median number of consults per year at those hospitals was three. So most hospitals aren't doing very many of them at all. And so if you're trying to learn this, I mean, and of course, if, the, if you say I'm going to shadow and then you can't make it to one, geez, you only got two more shots the whole year, okay? <laughs> and so if we really do learn by practice, um, this is the way we've got to do it. And so relax and enjoy, okay? Now, how are we going to do these consults? Really, we're going to teach you, we teach a very simple method here. And it is a method that has two parts to it. One is the preliminary work, the intake part of the, of the case, which is where you gather the facts. You read the chart, you learn as much about the case as you can by interviewing the parties to the case. And in, in essence, we've supplied you with the main part of this by giving you a write-up of each case. So that's really the facts that you would have gathered if you were um, doing this consult from scratch. So you know a little bit about the case going into it, okay? Um, typically, in real life, you, uh, we, we interview each of the parties, the family members, the patient, if the patient is conscious. But I can't honestly remember the last time I had a conscious patient on a consult. I mean, can any of you? I mean, that's really unusual. So you interview the family members, the physicians, other parties to the case, social workers, uh, nurses, whoever's really closely involved, chaplains, uh, depending on just who has a stake in the case. It's important that the physician know what he or she can expect from you. Okay, what's the process you're going to follow here? What's your goal, right? And the process is um, to tell them a little bit about how the meeting goes and, uh, and the fact that you're, trying to, you're aiming at consensus here. Um, then comes the action of the case, okay? I typically turn to the physician and say, um, would you, doctor, would, uh, would you um, review the medical facts of the case for us? And, um, one of the things I like about that is that physicians who, who may feel a little uptight love that because they they're comfortable with that. They, giving a history is something they're just very comfortable with. And so they pull the chain and say everything that they know about that case. And that also gives me an opportunity as the consultant. And again, um, this is where I think it's very, sometimes very helpful not to be a physician or a trained healthcare professional such as a nurse. I'm a layperson. I'm one, that 1% of philosophers. So I, um, I'm listening with a layperson's ear. And so when I hear jargon coming, you know, I, I can uh, either, not usually interrupt, but I'm making a little note to myself, doctor, could you explain what you mean by, you know, and, and sometimes I'll preface it with, you know, I'm a lay person, so I want to make sure I understand what you mean by. And so I, I can follow up with asking the questions that I think may uh, be obscure to the, the family member. Um, doctor gets done talking, I typically turn to the family member and say, um, given all of that, what do you think um, your mother would say or your father would say if, if she heard all of that? What, um, what, do you, or what are you hearing? I, uh, give them some opportunity to get the values that they are bringing to this out, how they're interpreting the medical facts. Many, many good consultants reverse this procedure. Okay? Many will start by turning to the family member and saying, can you tell me what you understand about your mother's condition? Okay, and then let that person talk, and then turn to the physician and say, can you um, tell me what you understand about the patient's condition? That can be really good. I don't do it unless I know the physician pretty well and trust that physician's style, simply because it can become, you tell me what you understand, you correct what he just said, right? And then we've already shut the thing down a little bit, okay? So I have to know that the style of this person's pretty gentle before I, I go in that direction. But as I say, I've seen many consultants use that extremely effectively. If that's your natural preference, run with it, see how it works for you, okay? Um, again, thinking about discussion of the patient's wishes, framing things in terms of what would your mother say, what would the patient want in this situation? And then doing the process of negotiation. If you, um, you want to get a back and forth movement going here. You don't want uh, one person to be talking very long during this next phase of it. And so you want there to be a dialogue. And so you want to be trying to identify points of commonality 
even if it's sort of a value thing. If the physician's saying, you know, we feel like we're inflicting additional pain and suffering on the patient, and, and the family member's saying, well, we don't want to do things that hurt her. Oh, okay, can we talk about this? Um, doctor, you're recommending against, uh, are you recommending for a, a DNR order? Oh, can you explain what that would mean? Okay, what do you think about that? If her heart stops, what do you think about this resuscitation? Try to get a dialogue going back and forth on specific points by pulling together a little bit about what you're hearing. If that breaks down for you at any point, when in doubt, summarize. Um, seriously, because there will be this awkward silence. And then you say, OK, what I think I'm hearing you saying, and start re recounting the su uh, summary. Because that then gives them an opportunity, when, they reflect, when you're reflecting back to them what you've heard, they, sometimes they hear it differently when it's coming from you. And they will say, oh, well, I didn't mean that we should X. And they, and they give you a new opening and start back in a different direction. Okay, and so reflective listening, summarizing, is a very effective technique in these situations. Um, try to find those points of consensus. Try to build on them. Try to not let them go by without noting them. And then when you've gotten some points of consensus, summarize and talk about your next steps. Okay, what do we need to do next?